Everybody, I'm Joey Landreth, and you are in that pedal show's Shangri-La. Actually, you're not. You're inside that camera. I'm at that pedal show's Shangri-La, and I'm here talking about Sly Guitar for the Guitar Magazine. I came up uh, as a, a sideman initially, like working for other artists um, in my in my sort of late teens, early twenties, and stuff. And that I've spent the better part of I don't know, 10 years of my career doing that. And then um, when I was 25, I started working with my own band. And bef bef right before that, it kind of happened. It was when I really started messing with slide guitar and open tunes and stuff like that. And there's a there's a famous Landreth who is a slide guitar player. And so I, I, I growing up was like, you know, with the last name that I have, there's no point ever in playing slide guitar while Sonny Landreth is alive and on the planet, you know. I grew up listening to a lot of his music because my dad was a big fan and you know there's there's something cool about you know our, our last name is not super common so when you share it with somebody who's doing something really cool you're always like yeah we got him so uh, yeah I grew up listening to a lot of Sonny's music and um, I got a slide one year for Christmas and and avoided it like the plague you know for that for that kind of reason um, but I had always loved the sounds that he got and the expression that he had um, and then I heard Derek Trucks play, and and that was kind of the the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, it was like, okay, I, that's so inspiring. Like, uh, so I started messing around um, with slide probably somewhere around 22 or 23, and then um, shortly thereafter, open tunings came along. I started getting really comfortable with the open tunings and started writing in them, and uh, it was mostly open E. Uh, e B E G sharp B E one five one three five one. You know, the second that I started writing songs and, and made a record with a bunch of songs recorded in those two, I I just it was kind of like, well, this I have to play them in those tunings and, um, and there but there was also like a decision made at one point whether I was gonna, whether or not I was gonna, try to, pursue what I was trying the sounds that I was trying to get out in standard tuning or in open tuning and. Because I, I, I couldn't really exist in both worlds very well. There are some players out there who are really good at it, um, but I'm not one of them. And um, so I just kind of like weighed my options, you know, like a pros and cons table, like standard tuning, lots of chords, open tuning, don't know any chords, you know, things like that. Um, but I eventually decided that, okay, well, I'll just, I'll start mapping out open tuning and stuff like that. So so it, it was kind of a slow progression, like from from sort of, messing around with slide a little bit to okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this like full on it was probably the, over the course of four or five years um but yeah that's that's kind of where it started so in terms of setup i do have a pretty specific and particular setup um that i employ on on the guitar uh initially when i first started playing slide i was just using like an 11 to whatever 49 or 52 set um and um, I had read in an interview somewhere that Sonny Landreth had suggested trying a 12 or a 13 on the E string and then uh, maybe also um, beefing up the B string as well. So I messed around with that and found that it made a pretty big difference in terms of like not having the slide bottom out on the frets, which was which is which is probably the hardest thing about playing slide is like controlling the amount of noise that comes off the instrument, you know. Um, so I started there. Um, it it took a while for me to really kind of settle into where I was going with it. But initially, um, all my guitars were an open E, and they were all strung up with an 11 set, but with a 13 and a 15, I think, on top. Um, and then a good buddy of mine by the name of Champagne, James Robertson, who's a, a, a great Canadian guitar player, slide guitar and regular guitar. He's just a, he's a monster. I met him one one year at a music festival backstage. We were just geeking out over each other's guitars, and he said, "Oh, this is my slide guitar." He passed me this guitar, guitar and open C, 
and uh, and it had baritone strings on it and um, I just could not get over the sound and so uh, it kind of haunted my dreams for a while and, and, and it, in the meantime a friend of mine had sent me like a cooter caster that he had made and said hey I think you like this check this thing out so I, I texted James and said hey would it weird, weird you out if I stole your idea and, and he said oh, it's not my idea go for it so um, so I started doing that on that on that cooter caster and then I just it just sort of became a really big part of how I um, how I play like just having access to those low notes like um, so a lot of a lot of those the, those sort of like fun chord progressions and stuff like that are, are great in those in like tuned down like that so um but yeah, so initially I started with this with the Daddario, fourteen to uh, sixty eight baritone set, I th which I think is their kind of standard baritone set. Um, but I I found that the the top strings in that tuning were too light, so the four the fourteen tuned down two full steps was just floppy. And I if you were just playing normal guitar, I think it would be okay. But because there's just like there's a lot of like the, the slide, despite the fact that it's, you know, it's small, when you put it into this equation, it's quite heavy. Um, and so I was struggling with bottoming, bottoming out again. So I started increasing the, the gauges. Now, I guess when you're tuned down two full steps, it's it kind of the, the tensions are significantly different. So in order to get it to where it felt t what I wanted it to be, I, I'm the, the high E string is a 19, 22. Is that right? Either 22 or 21. <laughs> 19, uh, 20 something. 26, um, 42, 52, and this is now a 65, I think. Um, the 68 sounds awesome, but the but the actual diameter just is quite significantly different. So it's taken me a while to settle into what, what really sort of feels good balance-wise. And then in terms of action, um, the the strings are are what I would call like your sort of normal high high action. It's not like, you know, we're not talking, you know, an inch and a half off the fretboard, but there's 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 some there's some distance between the I don't know if you can see this. I don't know why I made that noise, but whatever. <laughs> Sound effects are everything in the film industry. Um the yeah, so it's it it's definitely got some height on it. Um but um yeah, it's all to kind of balance out being able to play slide so that, that I find that the heavier strings help sort of take the weight of the slide, but but also allow you to keep the action down a little lower so that you can actually play it normally as well, which I which I do both of. And I'm not I'm not I, I'm not a big fan of like, yeah, here's my fretted guitar and here's my slide guitar. You know, I did that for a while, but then it was like, but. Sometimes I want to play slide on the fretted guitar, and sometimes I want to play finger stuff on the slide guitar, and so I'm just like, yeah, I just I just started to find a, a find a balance. Um, and then in terms of the actual gauge itself, like it's the 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 19 sounds massive, um, and it definitely is. I think it's a it's 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 the equivalent ish to 13s in in standard tuning, but you can still bend them. Um, it's just not super fun, but. <laughs> So it's definitely doable, um, but it's also you know you don't want to be playing Stevie Ray Vaughan covers all night because <laughs> you probably you'll probably die. <laughs> but, yeah. The reason for the pinky finger mainly was because um, that's what Sonny did, um, and I think like you know uh, also one of my other heroes is a guy named Lowell George who's a guitar player from um, Little Feet, and of course has his, has his own amazing solo record, but. He played on his pinky finger as well, I think. Yeah, he did. But Bonnie Raitt is also one of my heroes, and she uses her middle finger. Derek Trucks is, uses his third finger. Ry Cooter, I think, is his pinky finger as well. So it was mostly like what my favorite people were doing. Um, there's no other reason for it. I mean, I think, funny enough, um, I think the best vibrato you can get on a slide with a slide is, is on your third finger. Like every time I put my slide on my third finger, do vibrato, I'm like, oh, man. Got to figure out how to do that with my fourth finger, but um, 
but uh, mainly, you know, I've kind of stayed there um, because of the behind the slide stuff that I've I've sort of developed just a vocabulary and with um, yeah, it just kind of throws the whole thing out the window if you change which finger your slides on. So I don't think there's really a benefit or setback. I mean, you could you could argue one or the other, but you know, there's there's ways to get around it if you you know you watch Derek play and. He, he still frets a whole lot with his slide still on and and same thing with with all the other folks that I mentioned as well so um but yeah so for me it was it was just sort of it just sort of fell into itself but um in terms of behind the slide um I originally started messing around with it of course but with Sonny it's it's like I think he's kind of the pioneer for behind this behind the slide playing but um I again kind of tried to avoid it, that kind of stuff because why? Why would I, you know when Sunny Landed is around? Why? Why would I do that? But um, I, I, I've always been um, a really big fan of like of bebop and and music like that, and I, I, I want to be able to cop sort of bop esque lines or at least at least eighth note sort of oriented lines on the slide, and I was finding that like you know. <laughs> It was like, it was hard to get things sounding really nice and clean. And so I found that if I, if I mixed in a fretted, um, a fretted note amongst the sort of slide, slid notes, I don't even, it's not a thing, um, but sort of, sort of balanced the two, um, it helped clean things up a lot. So like... So it just kind of helped clean things up and and also um, can help keep you in check in terms of intonation as well. Like if you're really getting into it and you're closing your eyes and then all of a sudden you find yourself in halfway in between two keys, you can kind of slam a finger down and it goes, oh, yeah, that's that's where normal is. Um, things like that. But then I also um, I also do a fair amount of chordal stuff as well. So, you know, the fir the first sort of thing was taking... A major chord and making it into a minor chord um, so that 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 became kind of a part of the thing too and then working through little triadic sequence again just to sort of kind of battle what the what having a slide on your finger sort of takes away adding a adding in behind the slide stuff sort of helps helps cheat or buy some of those things back so that's kind of i've always it's, it's funny because a lot of people like it and think it's cool and to me the way i use it it just feels like i'm cheating <laughs> you know it's just like well i mean i could i could try and invest in in personal relationships or i could spend another eight hours a day trying to clean up my my left hand technique you know what i mean so that's kind of that's kind of ultimately what it uh what it came down to for me was like i just it i know it's doable like if you listen to like lap steel guy uh speedy west that dude is like razor sharp accuracy with the slide on so it's possible i just didn't want to put in the work i just <laughs> i worked hard enough in my life so that's that's it's kind of funny but um but it does work well it does work well in terms of starting places, I mean, there is so much stuff to consume out there. So I think, you know, you just start by finding something that you like and trying to cop it. Um, the, the hardest thing about playing slide guitar is that physically it's, it's weird. So um, best thing you can do is just noodle around and, and, and get comfortable. Um, that's sort of 90% of the battle. Like, uh, yeah, learning a lot of songs. Like start with things like um, Muddy Waters and Elmore James, and a lot of those old blues guys. Try to cop their feel. Um, you know, there's there's uh, there's there's a there's a lot of really really great stuff that'll get you started. Um, but in terms of getting into the more um, 
more I don't want to use the word sophisticated because that's not the right word but like more elaborate sort of technique stuff um, I would say a good place to start is take take a melody that you're familiar with um, and and try to play it as cleanly and in tune as you can so something like Amazing Grace is a great place to start so you could do like um <laughs> like happy birthday or your national anthem from whatever country you're in you know something that something that you know really well so that when you when you do inevitably drift out of tune or make a mistake you're you're going to catch it right away um that's i think that's part of the part of the trouble in transcribing other people's stuff is it's not your vocabulary so you know it's it's obviously great exercise but for things like playing slide and, and developing um, a good relationship with intonation. It it does help to keep it simple and go slow. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people want to be flying right away. This typical guitar player, sort of, um, well, typical guitar player. So the trick is just patience and nice and slow. Um, definitely won't hurt you if you have a guitar that you can spare to throw heavier strings on and raise the action a little bit. Fender guitars are easy are easier than you know, Gibson style guitars, Fender style guitars are easier to sort of modify so you can, you can just race the saddles on the bridge. Um, that's, that's, that's usually the first place that I, the first thing that I tell people to do is get, do yourself a favor and raise the action a little bit because it's part of the trouble with playing slide is when you pick up your, your Paul Reed Smith set to shred, you're going to make a ton of noise and it's really frustrating and, and discouraging and then you're going to, you're going to give up. So, so giving yourself a leg up by raising the action up and giving yourself a bit of a, an advantage is really, really helpful. Um, you know, if you've got if you've got that down and you feel like, yeah, okay, I can do that. I can pick out Amazing Grace. I can pick out, you know, O Canada, The Star Spangled Banner, or Waltzing Matilda. You know, any of these any of these great tunes. Um, but you want to go to the next level. I would then say, take 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 a scale of some sort major scale whatever it actually doesn't matter it's kind of the same kind of thing so you could take you could easily take a minor pentatonic staying on one string So that's moving around um, and experimenting with different things. Uh, you know, this, the the cool thing about slide is you can you can milk sort of more expression out of a note by bending into it or bending out of it or you know even even knocking it slightly out of tune, um, like um, like a fifth for example, or even a, even a flat seven like in a minor pentatonic. If you play that slightly sharp. So somewhere between the flat seven and the one, you know, as opposed to. So again, that's. So it's not exactly a major seven. And it's not exactly a dominant seven kind of somewhere in between and it's just got this extra like little bit of attitude so things like that are really cool that you can you can do with um with uh with slide i i mean the first time i heard that was actually stevie wonder when he sings he do, he does that like he'll do that with a flat seven or a flatted third he'll knock it slightly sharp so it's not it's not a new note it's not a different it's just like slightly slightly out and it's just got the greatest attitude on it so I started trying to pick pick stuff like that. Um, 
getting back to intonation. So that's kind of the opposite of intonation, del deliberately playing out of tune. But getting back to intonation, things that you can you can also work on are like semitones. Semitones are tough. Um, so you know, little segments of a chromatic scale. So what I was doing there is taking a taking a major triad, root third and fifth, and then playing a half step below and above. Or so giving yourself like that home base of the major triad to sort of keep your ears in check and then moving around it so not they're not necessarily that's not necessarily the most musical of exercises but it's just really really good to sort of get yourself out of that you know um sticking to a scale kind of thing i really like targeting a scale on one string because it takes away the the sort of innate guitar player's need for fingerings and patterns and it forces you to think in terms of what's going on in the scale what what degree of the scale what quality does that have when you play a fourth what does a fourth sound like as opposed to like blazing through which is which is great and it's good it's good for you in all kinds of different ways but musically speaking i feel like it's kind of detrimental so i i, I always even with like because I, I do a fair amount of teaching these days and with my students who aren't interested in slide we do the same thing looking at like what what function do these notes if we're looking at a minor pentatonic or a melodic minor scale or harmonic minor what quality do these intervals have? So you can you can really dig into that with the slide stuff, sort of one one scale, one string, messing around with it and trying to find trying to find cool things and um yeah, and that's also good for your intonation. So uh, right hand technique wise, I usually do have a pick tucked in between my index finger and my middle finger, um, but that's mostly for fretted stuff and strumming. Um, I very very rarely play slide with a pick. I mean, I may if I'm trying to if I'm doing something pretty specific like if I want a lot of attack, um, particularly if I want a more more treble or like more top end, I will do that. But it's pretty rare. Um, the other the other scenario that I'll use a pick with a slide is if I'm playing um, sort of hybrid fingers and slide stuff and I'm playing quick so um, but again that's that's pretty rare um, but in terms of fingers with slide um, I have developed a pretty specific kind of approach to it so um, my my middle finger and index finger sort of do the lion's share of picking so if I'm on the if I'm on the first string on the high E string um, my thumb goes across all five of the bottom strings and that that just leaves that just leaves that string open so as I switch strings my thumb just kind of comes down um, as I go lower down into the string set so like playing on the third string or the fourth string my third finger will come up and start to mute the, the treble strings so eventually, like if you're playing the the fourth or the third string, I've actually got my third finger, my second finger, and my thumb, and then my index finger there. So it's so it's it it may sound kind of complex, but it's it's really not. It's just something that's developed after, you know. Again, the slide can be especially if you're using a metal slide, um, it can be super noisy. So I'm just trying to mitigate the, as much noise as I can. So that's just kind of where that technique is kind of developed. So if I'm playing on the third string or the fourth string, Yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of how that's developed over time. Um, 
Just trying to keep it clean. Yeah. So yeah, talking about pedals um, and slide guitar, people people love to talk about compressors uh, in particular. Um, I do I do love compressors with slide guitar. Um, it is it is a very classic sound, especially of, of Lowell George, who's one of my favorites. Um, but I don't use a lot of compression um, personally unless I want to go for that Lowell sound. You know, that's kind of like that's one of my sort of sounds in my back pocket. I've got a preset on my pedal board that's like the Lowell sound. It's like, <laughs> um, but especially for starting out, I would I would say just go straight into your amp. It's it's like there's a very cool relationship that you can establish between your hands and your guitar and your amp. Um, particularly, I mean, I'm biased, of course, but with slide guitar, there's a special thing that happens, and I feel like it's a good thing to get to know before you introduce. You know, people go, oh, yeah, but I, I got to have that sustain. Like, yeah, I, it's, it's definitely cool, but especially when you're first learning something, I feel like that can add... First of all, it's going to add noise. Second of all, it's it's going to complicate what what you're doing with your hands. You know, I, I I always want people to establish that relationship first. Pedals are great; they're super fun. I everybody knows I'm a pedal junkie. Um, but when when you're first starting out, it's I think it I think it's something worth waiting until you feel like I really know what's going on here, and I feel like I'd like to have more X. You know, overdrive is super fun. Anything that adds a little bit of compression is gonna is gonna give you a cool sort of leg up with with slide in terms of sustain and stuff like that. But you you know, uh, you can you can do a ton with just the volume controls on your guitar and, and going straight into the amp. So uh, that that would kind of be my my take on that is you, you must be patient, young Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 